everyone. Um, it's lovely to have an audience to get to know you, actually. It's uh, lovely to see you all here uh, this morning. Um, welcome to the talk about how to engrave colour and pattern, which is a lover of both. And I think uh, the panel has not disappointed here. I'm looking forward to, hear, uh, to hearing their expert tips and advice. So I want to begin with some introductions. So we've got three interior design talents here today. On my left is Jessica Buckley, who's come all the way down from Edinburgh. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your company? I know it started in 2011. Of course, uh, it was me for many years, uh, but we have now uh, a nice team of six. So a nice, lovely uh, team in Edinburgh. Uh, we've always been in Edinburgh, but we work throughout the UK and have had uh, projects abroad as well. Uh, we focus primarily on residential design. We love colour, we love pattern, and we love the mix and the joy that uh, the mix can bring. Um, so very, very happy to be part of today's lineup. Well, thank you for coming all, the, all this way, although you said you, you're up no, and down it, a lot. Love it. No, um, and then in the middle, we've got Lucy of Barlow and Design, which I think you started with your brother and now also your husband in, is involved. It's very much a family affair. I'd love to know what that's like sometime. <laughs> um, but can you tell us a little bit about the types of projects that your company, Barlow and Barlow, do? Yes, yeah, sure. We, um, it's, it is mainly residential, although we are doing a, a hotel at the moment um, in in. Um, in the Cotswolds, but we st we started in 2013, as you say, with my brother, who's a lighting designer. So lighting design is a huge part of the service that we offer. And then my husband joined the company a few years ago, and he's an architect by training. So he's head of our interior architecture. So we specialise in um, a lot of bespoke joinery and the more sort of technical side of of, mm. of, it, th of that side, which is what Josh loves. Um, and yeah, we too love colour and pattern um, and thrilled to be here as well. When's the hotel opening? Is that a long way off? Um, next spring. Okay, okay, I'll look out for that. Uh, and last but by no means least, we've got Sue Jones, who's creative director of Ochre and really the mastermind behind why we're all here. I think probably a lot of you already know who Sue is, but do you want to say a little bit about your role at Ochre? Yeah, firstly, I want to apologise. I obviously didn't get... <laughs> these ladies in the most beautiful dresses, so um, apologies for the start. Um, yeah, I'm um, creative director now of Oka, and I'm one of the, the, the early founders, uh, so I'm, I'm the old person on the block now. Um, and uh, it started 22 years ago, as, as you know, and we have, uh, uh, my job is, you know, quite far reaching in the, in the business because I'm completely in charge of product um, and my job is to keep it on track and to keep up with everything else that's going on and make sure that we're innovative and and m without being too restricted by trends to make sure the brand uh, grows a a and expands um, and we like to do that by involving other people so this is why we started this uh, this um, new uh, collaboration and and indeed the the tailored offer which i'll talk to you more about later brilliant i don't know if you all saw it on the way in but the love seats that we're here to talk about were in the window looking fabulous and fabulously different which i think is what's so lovely about the project i want to ask firstly why you chose um, excuse me <coughs> my throat um i know we've got jess here and lucy but also gavin houghton who's not here why you chose those three um interior designers really to execute the love seats well, easy, really. I mean, what we do at, at Oka is try and offer a customer something that they can really work with. But for us to do these sofas and, and armchairs, etc., in patterns is another whole can of worms. And so we wanted people to put their stamp on it. And we chose Lucy, Jessica, especially because of their particular style. It, uh, they, they, they are Oka customers and, and have, have been very loyal for a long time. But we knew we'd get to see something different, which gives us, um, gives a, 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 us uh, another picture of, of what people can do with it. And that's what it's all about. It's giving people confidence to do something else with it. Um, and, and so it was an easy choice for us. And it's called, um, the range is uh, tailored by Oka. I love that it's British made. Do you want to talk a little bit about actually the tailored by range and, and how that came about? And um, I know that it's made in a British workshop. 
Yes, I mean, we, we went round the houses on, on naming it. At one stage, it was called Bespoker. <laughs> which, which I'm really pleased got to do that. <laughs> I did not know that. That is a great. Uh, <laughs> uh, which was a step too far, I think. Uh, someone being very, very over clever. Um, but yes, now this is a service that we wanted to do for a very long time. And, and, and like all these things, you know, I get very overexcited about a new plan and a new direction and new things to do. But it's not that simple putting it online, making it really work, and certainly not with our far reaching suppliers. We have to be available, whoever does it for us has to be available, has to understand when we need changes made, has to, has to be um, flexible, um, which is not always easy when it's made 3,000 miles away or 6,000 miles away. Um, and so it was a, a, a different kind of project for us. And we were very lucky to find a family-owned business, which are, you know, are fewer and farther between these days, which is a sad thing, who are, I think, the second, third generation and they were delighted to work with us from sampling stage. So what we did is given them the four designs, which we always intended to increase. Um, and we then curated uh, a selection of fabrics um, and tried, even with those four designs in three sizes or whatever they are, that throws up at least 800 options that you can choose when you, you go through it, but much to our tech team's horror, um, because that's 800 SKUs, which, <laughs> which is uh, complex. But it was done to give people more choice. And a lot of English people especially are obsessed by comfort, and they want things that have got their mark on it. Um, and, and we wanted to combine those two aspects. So these are all British made, using old-fashioned, well-learned well uh, techniques, um, which was very important to us, you know, the, the getting the feather combination right, um, you, you know, getting the springing right, everything was really important to us, and we managed to achieve that. Uh, so I, for one, am delighted, and, and looking forward to introducing more, more into the range. And if anybody has some suggestions, I'm very happy to take them on, on board. So please give me your feedback. It looks um, so cosy. Was there a reason why you chose the love seat to be the one that you um, had sort of uh, done all these different fabrics out of the range? I, I never quite understood the word love seat. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's quite squashed. <laughs> uh, some people call it a one seat sofa, which actually amuses me rather too. Uh, the love seat has uh, become a much more uh, popular piece um, these days. I think it started in America, and, and to my mind, it's an American armchair, very big, and uh, as all the Americans do, everything bigger. But it has a real place. It's the sort of thing that, you know, you can curl up in, you can work in, you can uh, put your feet up on. It's not so... It, it has a big scale, but it's not too big, which is what I love, the sort of drama. Yeah, it's got nice that. slender arms, yeah, isn't it? And, but the scale is big, and so it will work in a... Uh, in a bedroom, at the end of a bed, or you know, where, wherever you want it. In fact, in, in very big rooms, um, they look great two together. So almost like massive armchairs. Um, and uh, so you know, it was it, we we decided on this style because it can go either way. It can go modern or it can go quite uh, quite um, quite traditional. Well, it's brilliant, the, the diverse, um, I think, choices that have been made. This is Gavin's, actually. I love his contrast. But I want to talk a little bit now about how each of you approached the brief. So, uh, I, now, this, that's Gavin's. So, can we go to, um, have we got both of them? Oh, we've got Jess's. Great. So, um, Jess, can you tell me sort of how you decided to pick the fabric you picked? Um, I think what's interesting is everyone's got skirts on their love seats. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. As well. Yep. There's obviously a bit of a trend there. We've all that, um, sort of separately decided to go for. Mm. Um, I would love to say uh, that the choice of this uh, fabric, which is called paw print, I'd love to say that paw print was a very witty uh, decision uh, for putting my signature stamp 
on this uh, love seat, but I'm afraid uh, it wasn't that sophisticated. I just really, really love this fabric. Um, for me, it's a very playful fabric and um, it is quite relaxed. But I think that it also works quite nicely and upholsters beautifully as quite an elegant look. So you've got that juxtaposition between it's quite a casual, it's not too formal, um, but it looks very smart once it's upholstered on an item. And I thought that that looked rather smart here. Um, it's quite rare to be selecting fabric upholstery for an item in vacuo. Usually it's with reference to a scheme that you're going to put it in. Um, I didn't choose paw print because I thought, right, this sofa is going to look beautiful in this room because really, ultimately, this sofa is going to go into the home of somebody else. It's going to be available for auction, which I'm sure Beth and, and Sue will explain a bit more about later on. Um, so I chose something which I hoped would have a wi wide appeal mm -hmm. so that not only the customers of Oka will like it for the purposes of it being in this showroom and in the brochures and so forth, but also when it comes down to uh, somebody acquiring this sofa, that it will fit nicely into a home. So a smallish scale pattern um, to me is kind of easy to, to work with, um, but it also has plenty of personality. So it was about sort of choosing something that toes that line quite, quite neatly. So um, I hope that's what we've achieved here. I also chose this because this, this particular fabric comes in a red colourway. Um, and I chose the blue version um, because, again, I thought, like, very often our clients, when they, you know, we ask them, like, what colours do you like, very rarely do people say that they don't like blue. So um, it tends to be kind of, not everyone does like blue, of course, but it tends to be a colour that, that, that people do sort of find easy, easy to get on board with. So if uh, a pattern sofa is... It is, it is a new thing for you, then then hopefully a smallish pattern in blue is, is something sort of easy to, to get on board with. Mm. It's got a lovely summery feel, I feel. Kind of fresh, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got, I've got a, um, a, an off-white safer, but actually it's beginning to look a bit like that. Because <laughs> of my dots. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine paw print, real paw print <laughs> on it. Well, I think with, since like... 2.5 million people have bought dogs in lockdown. I think paw print will be very popular <laughs> in the British public. Um, so good choice. Lucy, your love print is quite rock and roll. Um, I love, love this one as well. I think it's brilliant. What was your thinking? I mean, here it really is like a statement piece, but what, what were you thinking? <laughs> it is a bit. I feel terrible. Jessica, you came at it from such a thoughtful <laughs> angle, and I didn't <laughs> do that at all. Um, I love leopard print, um, always have done, always have done, always will do. And it probably won't be surprising to hear that not that many clients are willing um, to let me use it as much as I would like to. <laughs> so when an opportunity comes and I can play the client, it's what I gravitate towards. Um, and... I thought that the scale of this leopard print worked so well with the scale, as Sue was saying, that these love seats are such an interesting scale, and it's funny that you say it's an American thing. We seem to have adopted so many things from America, I find, in our industry. Um, but this big scale um, seat works so well with the scale of this particular leopard print, because you get this wonderful sort of sensual stripe, which mm. I think is really striking. Um, and the trim is a, is a collaboration I did with an amazing... Um, trimmings designer based in London. We worked on this on this collection together, and I've been desperate to use it on 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 a on some upholstery, and thought how sort of wild it looked with with the leopard. And um, we put it together, and I think it's sort of yeah. It's I mean it's it, yeah. It, it's pretty rock and roll. I, I agree. I like <laughs> that it's um, because sometimes. Leopard print can go really tacky, but because it's on such a beautiful piece of furniture and you've got all those details and finishes, it just looks really refined. It's kind of very clever. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think you've got to be so careful. There's, leopard, there's leopards and there's leopards, and <laughs> you've got to be so careful on the... On the, on the le everyone has their favourite leopard fabric, um, and this is a really, a really smart one, because you're right, some can go so... Mm. Um, can go so wrong. Um, it looks like a real skin. Actually. It looks like a real yeah, skin, doesn't it? Great, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why we chose it. And I think yeah, it's. 
I think it's come, come out quite fun. <laughs> I'm going to ask, but you probably won't be able to say, Sue, but do you have a favourite? I mean, what did you think of all the different... I'm not answering that. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. But any, uh, yeah, I guess I won't try that. Because that would just be me. But were you... Um, did you expect there to be such a different approach? Because I think it really... You've got three... No, Apart from the skirt that everyone's got in common... They're just such different choices. Well, I, I go back to what you're saying about the skirt. That is very <coughs> interesting because we we have seen you know a lot more people wanting this sort of tight covered, upholstered look. And I'm a great fan of of skirts, be they pleated or be they straight or kick pleated in the corners or even bullion. Um, uh, and I love that as a contrast as well. So that has has struck me um, very much. Uh, it's made me want to have a look at what else I can do with it because what we do is offer some some quite beautiful linens and, and beautiful colours, etc. But I'm just wondering whether there's some contrast piping that we can mm. offer or some different, or indeed, with or without a skirt or a fringe. Uh, I, I can feel my tech team... <laughs> no more <laughs> choices <laughs> <laughs> but actually it has made me think about that and I will have uh, a word with our manufacturer and, and play around a bit more in the future uh, to see if we can put that in the mix I think it will be and, and actually with Sevenham's help because she gives me wonderful feedback from the front line um, you know what, what, what people are asking for so I will so I know some of you in the audience are probably also designers and some maybe not. So I just wanted to ask um, if someone's going to upholster something bespoke for the first time, what you're kind of, and I'd like to start with Sue and then maybe move through everybody, but what are the first things that you think customers should, uh, do you suggest they think about? I know we've talked in the past, Sue, because you worked in fashion before, about looking your wardrobe, what colours, what patterns do you love, what fabrics do you love? What, how does, what do you think the... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a trend-led person, and as far as I'm concerned, the, the best colour to use is your favourite colour. Um, so I don't, I don't look and see, oh, purple's in at the moment. That's not how I, I approach things at all. Hmm. But if you're going to spend some money on a sofa, it has got to be super comfortable. Uh, and that's a lot of what you're paying for, is the, the make and, uh, and finish. Then I suppose you look at your lifestyle. You know, my dogs are more on the sofa than I am. You know, I haven't got much room. Um, <laughs> but and if they don't approve of it, then it doesn't pass the test. So they've got to be reasonably pra practical, although I'm not a practical person. And, you know, my sofas are off-white. Not practical at all. Uh, but, you know, the covers come off, so I can get them, them cleaned. I don't think I would ever tell someone to get a, 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 an upholstered white sofa. I mean, it would look lovely when it was delivered, but it wouldn't take long for it to look terrible. So there is an element of practicality and wearability uh, in it. I think also you have to establish whether you, whether you like to have a relaxed look, which is sometimes the skirt, the loose cover, and sometimes it's a, a, a much more formalised look, which is construed as being more contemporary you know these big open plan spaces etc which is qu how quite a lot of people live now but I wanted something that would fit into a country house would fit into a, a normal scheme but also you could adapt it for a penthouse or something much much slicker so that's the, the thinking behind the designs we chose and what um if I could now come to you Lucy when you're working on a residential scheme. Um, obviously, there's the larger scheme at hand, but when you get to kind of discussing upholstery, what kind of questions do you ask your clients? Um, as Sue says, it's, it's so dependent on how people live. Um, some people want sofas that they can really slouch down on, watch TV on, you know, make themselves at home. That might be in a sort of a, a TV family room situation. And then sometimes there might be a drawing room where the, 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 the sofas are much more elegant, much more tailored, mm. slightly less slouchy and comfortable, but mm. that's the look. So it's so dependent on the room it's going, how it's going to be used. And then, of course, are there children? Are there dogs? You know, all these considerations. Mm. Um, 
so yeah, it's 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 sort of tailoring it, the, the upholstery to suit the lifestyle because as, again, there's not be nothing more annoying than having something delivered that looks so beautiful, but it's it's just totally impractical and trashed within within six months because they're expensive. Yeah. I mean, I'm always hankering after a velvet sofa, but I have no idea how that stands up against velvet's tough. Oh, it's good, right? Yeah. Good. Okay, that, that's helpful. That's <laughs> my argument with the other half. You've been enabled. <laughs> I've been enabled. <laughs> Jess, is there anything you've got to add to that? I mean, well, not a great deal because yeah. I think Sue and Lucy have probably mm. pretty much hit it on the on the nail on the head on that one. But I, I would say, um, mm. if the question was about. Uh, I think you sort of said about someone not having done an upholstery. Yeah, is that, is, was yeah, that, yeah. Know, like it, what, a fresh, the like there's a tailor by range. They're coming in yeah. to the store. Then, then I would urge people not to be too safe um, because there are plenty of sort of off the shelf options which, by design, are very sort of simple and and neutral and they're and they're designed so that you can put your personality on them through cushions and so forth. And mm. th and that's fine. That mm. that that that's great. Um, but when you're choosing um, upholstery and you've got that free range of like, right, what fabric, what trimming am I putting on this? Um, that's not the time to be sort of like playing it too safe. I mean, the whole point is that you can be a bit more expressive and choose something a bit more fun. And that's the sort of nerve wracking thing, I suppose, especially if you've got half a mind to thinking, well, what are the practicalities and blah, 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 which, which are important, yes. Um, but I think um, a lot of our clients have said to us, you know, oh, well, you know, we, we need you to sort of hold our hand a bit to sort of make us ab avoid yeah. the decisions yeah. that are too safe. So I think that can be a bit of a danger when mm -hmm. faced with so much choice. I think you have to go with the colours that you love, mm -hmm. that you've always loved. So that, that would be a good good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, and and maybe try and just, just chip yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone and, and try not to tone, your, tone it down too much. Try not to be too safe. Uh, and uh, if needs be, um, ask, a, ask an interior designer <laughs> to, to help you. Um, yeah. I mean, I was just looking at um, these love seats. Obviously, you often are doing an entire scheme of someone's room, but I like the idea of trying to build a scheme around a statement piece. Like, you've seen some bright pink velvet sofa that you just like, I have to have that. What's the journey then for kind of making sure it stands out, but it doesn't jar? And what... Is it just about, uh, maybe I come, I'm going to come to the rock and roll leopard print lady first actually <laughs> on this, because I think this is a good, you know, what would you do there to sort of make sure your leopard print stands out, but doesn't sort of completely jar in a room? Yeah, I mean, everything's sort of balanced, isn't it? So um, there's, there's always a moment when, when you're doing an install and, and items start arriving one by one. And say, for instance, if, if for the sake of argument that arrives, and the client looks at it and goes, "Oh my God, what have we done?" Mm -hmm. And then the more, the more that gets, the more that arrives, and the more that you start spreading it out and putting it in place and stuff, it all starts to blend together. And suddenly, what looked like really terrifying individual items all just blend. I guess that's why people like us have jobs because mm. we have the time to be able to make sure that it was all going to work. And that's through the whole design process, mm. you know. The, the millions of samples and all the mood boards and all the you know decisions we make and um, I think it's the value in people like us I guess is doing things that are unexpected and making them work but when it comes together it looks totally harmonious but but you know as, as Jessica said you've got to be brave um, and everyone who makes a brave decision we find is so thrilled with it yeah. and on the on the occasions when they when they wimp out they always come back in six months' time and say, you know what, I wish we'd done X, yeah, Y, or Z. That's interesting. I remember when I, oh, I did up my, my house, um, we, when the install was going on, and uh, I got a call from my husband saying, Sue, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, uh, uh, there's something the size of a swimming pool. <laughs> it's just arrived, it was an ottoman. <laughs> and it's raspberry! <laughs> And I, I said, oh, let's just put it outside, doesn't matter. By Monday, he was in love with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that, Sue, because I know that you have a particular way you like to often build a, a scheme in a room. Can we talk, I think a yeah, slide. I'm not nearly as brave as, as these two. Um, I, I'd like to be in my dreams a bit more, uh, but I have to think about more practicality, which is why we wanted to offer this extra service of people being able to uh, to bring their own fabrics or choose their own fabrics for it. My way of doing it is 
I tend to use neutrals on a wall. Um, I, I, and I don't mean white, I mean, you know, neutrals. Um, and I, most of my upholstery is light, except for the raspberry ottoman. <laughs> uh, but it, I, I get my colour from usually the rug, not the carpet, the, the, the rug. I use a lot of matting and things. And then I, I love books and pictures and objects and cushions and lampshades, and that's where I bring the colour. But I'm not saying that's the right way. I, it's the way I've, I've usually done it. Uh, but when I see that what people so, do bravely, I'm awe-inspired and very impressed. <laughs> well, I think this is, I think this is pretty brave. Mm. Love yeah, that, that was a, another almost mistake. <laughs> 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 it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and let's look a little bit about both of your um, styles now. Um, Jess, I think we've got some slides of your work, and I'd just like you to talk a little bit um, we, I think I don't know how we're doing on time, Eliza. Actually, oh, oh we're good, we're good. Um, so I'd love you to just explain a little bit about your approach um, with these sure, slides. Sure. Okay. In this this particular uh, drawing room, it's uh, it is a drawing room as opposed to sort of a family sitting room, um, and our clients wanted something that. Um, would be a little bit of a haven for them away from their small children. Uh, that said, you know, it wasn't like children are banned from this room, so it didn't want to be sort of overly formal. Um, they looked quite aghast when I suggested that we would paint the walls you know, this, this quite vivid green. Um, but uh, I thought that it was important for them, they said, that it um, sort of segued nicely into the views of the garden and obviously green is, is, is quite a lateral in, uh, interpretation of that um, but that was the jumping off point and then all the fabrics that came with it were uh, a sort of mix and match of uh, planes and patterns and um, I think that the idea was to have to come away from a, a drawing room from being too formal I think the danger of having the best room never being used is like a, a bit of a sacrilege, really. So I think it's nice when even the, the so-called sort of smart drawing room feels that it's comfortable and homely and welcoming and is a room that you'll actually go and sit in it rather than just occasionally for Christmas or, you know, after dinner parties or so forth. Um, so um, the, the, the main, I suppose, like, the thing that first strikes you about this is, is, is the wall colour. Um, but there's lots of pattern going on on the armchairs in a sort of chintzy, chintzy floral fabric. And then we've got a plain and a block print, print fabric. And we've got a wall on the ottoman. I believe that's an ochre rug. And uh, there's a few things from ochre in there um, which are sort of dotted around. Uh, so that's quite nice that we can sort of uh, be on brand for, for today's talk. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, the, the green, I think, was the, the, the jumping off point. And we wanted to sort of, it's actually in... in in, in Edinburgh, this, this home, but uh, the clients wanted it to feel sort of like a country, sort of country home, so it, that's why the sort of florals and quite a relaxed sort of look rather than a sleek sort of city city vibe. So I think we've um, hopefully achieved yeah, that. Yeah, check that box. And I like that you've painted the, the uh, radiator green too. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a favourite trick, well, sort of yeah. use the radiator. Yeah, and, and although it's actually very calm, a lot of the pattern and colour there, I love the punchy pink you've got in there, little with the cushions. Yeah, we often use that as sort of like the, the bolder, bold, really bold things as a sort of small mm. small part of a, a, you know, a cushion or an ottoman or so forth. Um, it's all about the mix, and as Lucy was alluding to earlier, it's all about the balance, and I think, you know, just not being too, too, too ca overly cautious with it, just... Um, yeah, and just uh, having the uh, strength and courage just to keep going uh, and adding little bits and um, and when you have um, I think when you pair things and you have sort of tactical arrangements, it allows you to have that kind of burst of colour, but yet it still looks um, very sort of calm and refined at the same time because you've got that nice arrangement. It's a small part of an yeah. overall room, and so the eye, the eye, you know, uh, when you're looking at a photograph of a room, it's very different from how you actually experience a room. Mm. So if we all look at this photo, we're seeing green, we're looking at bright pink cushions, thinking, gosh, I'm not sure I'd use bright pink cushions. If you were all in that room, you might have a slightly different opinion of it because it looks slightly different, and you know, your eyes sort of see things differently when you're in situ. So 
Um, mm. ho hopefully it's, it sort of presents quite nicely on the photograph, but I think the idea is that it's important that it works for the people who are in it rather than sort of what, what it looks like in my portfolio. Yeah, okay. And then uh, Lucy, I think we've hopefully got Oh, sorry, that's that, that's Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> that's Lucy. Okay. okay, Lucy, do you want to talk a little bit about your approach to this room? This room um, was, this was actually done for some American clients, but in, in Notting Hill. And they, they'd wanted, because they're from LA and they wanted everything to be white. Um, white walls, white everything, because that's what they know from LA. And so we had to... I, I had to explain that the light in London does not lend itself, yeah. in my opinion, I know some people would disagree, but in my opinion, to all white interiors. So we, we, we sort of, um, they, they accepted that and we found this sort of middle ground and so we went a bit punchy um, on the joinery colours, well, not, not overly punchy, but you know, we added in some, um, some, some nice colour and the two-tone effect was, was a way of sort of bringing some some interest into mm. the into the drawing room we then did the you can't really see it but the windows are in the dark the, the navy blue color the window frames um and then they wanted white furniture so w w that always slightly a white sofa too saying always it always slightly makes me nervous especially because it's a fitted it's you know it's not a loose cover you can't well you could take those off and have them dry clean but not quite as easy as a proper loose cover mm. um so we then um scattered it with lots of lovely lots of lovely cushions and in, in some of our favourite fabrics. Um I'm just looking around and seeing that she's annoyingly I don't think anything from Oka is in there. Velvet cushions? Oh the velvet cushions <laughs> <laughs> The velvet cushions which I love because they're sort of nice big big bulky size having borrowed some recently. I love it was all velvet. In fact it was lovely up seeing this all in the store all laid yeah. out. Um, I just wanted to go back to you, Sue, really, and talk about um, oak has got many influences and textures and things. I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about kind of you always say there's no rules, which I really like, but I'm like, there must be a few rules <laughs> when it comes to kind of how you mix colour and pattern. Well, I, I mean, I would say that it's about confidence and uh, I, I don't think there are a lot of rules in, in that I, you know, I can't define taste and uh, you know, I like to say there's nothing wrong. Of course there are things that you can do wrongly, but I think the experimentation and uh, is, is part of everybody's sort of own growing up. And so I, I don't like to advocate things that you're going to get bored of in a few years. I, I, I like the idea of adding to it um, and, and, and it growing with you. Of course, there will be some changes, but you know, I collect things and I, 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 I am not in any way a minimalist. And so I could not live in a room where everything had to be put away. Um, and so I, I love the idea of people going on a journey with their homes. It should be the most important thing in their lives. It should be somewhere that they give them pleasure and other people. Uh, and so I, I, I love the idea of, uh, of people mixing what they've had before, old things with new things. No house should just have everything brand new in it. Um, I, I like, um, and I like the one concession I've made, and I haven't been very popular with men especially over this, is that I managed to persuade people that they need to change their their cushions with the seasons, which has been a very good marketing thing. <laughs> one man came up to me the other day and he said, Sue, I, I love you, but, you know, my wife has, has gone mad. And I said, well, don't worry about it. Um, you know, it's only twice a year. He said, twice a year, it's every week. <laughs> you need kind of an extra cushion cover, don't you? Exactly. Like, to exactly. revolve them. Because I love yeah. that's the sort of change I approve of. It's, it, it, you know, not, you know, out with the old in with the new all the time. So that's uh, perhaps part of my ethos. And, and uh, you know, age makes things better very often. Mm. So. Especially if they're good fabric. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you've got any rules. I mean, I know that there's, uh, it's quite, you wouldn't expect it, but it's quite good to mix geometrics with florals. Um, and obviously to mix up scale and pattern. But do you have any sort of, if you had to kind of define your 
DNA when you're mixing pattern? I'll come to you first, Jeff. Do you think there is something in that that you're like, well, if I have a stripe, I know that would be great to have a chintz, or is there anything in that way that you think? Absolutely. Well, pretty much as you just said, I try not to um, have too too many of one type of pattern. Mm. Like, all the upholstered items in a, in a drawing room, I wouldn't have them all plain. I would have, in fact, really, I prefer to have them all patterned, but mm. different types of patterns. So you might have one stripe, one floral, one geometric, maybe. I used to love geometrics about 10 years ago. I was sort of like obsessed with them, and I really loved that sort of like quite striking geometric. Fre- to my eyes, it looked fresh and contemporary, and I really loved it. And I really wasn't really into all the sort of chintzy things. And fast forward ten years, and here we are, and it's all frills yeah. and, and florals, and I'm totally on board with that. So I think it's okay to understand that your style and your taste will evolve. It'll just change as it does with like you know. Yes. I'm sure we wouldn't all necessarily have been wearing this sort of mm. these fashions that we're all wearing today, like ten years ago. It's just things change. Um, the problem is, I suppose, is like people that feel this pressure that they've got to get it right and they've got to love it forever, and especially when it's quite an investment piece. Um, but um, but I think about the mix is allows you to then mix in different elements and keep mixing and keep changing, and eventually things as a whole will evolve. Mm. Um, I think a sort of rule of thumb when you're mixing your patterns, I like to have a good sort of four or five different fabrics and try and mix the scale. So if you are going to have two di- two or three different florals in, in, a, in, a, in a room, isn't a no-no, but make sure that they're all just slightly different. Like maybe this one's a really small one and maybe this one's a large blousy mm-hmm. one. Um, and um, uh, I think trying to see, make decisions when you're doing things fully bespoke is when you're making decisions based on sort of small samples which we do all day every day um but that's only because we're familiar with sort of how they look in larger pieces so um it's probably quite a good tip for people who are embarking on like embracing more pattern and color in their own homes is to quite often showrooms will lend you returnable samples you can sort of see it in a larger scale and try and understand how the fabric scales like relate to each other so Mm. i think it's um there's no hard and fast rule, it's about balance, um, uh, but um, just sort of trying to mix it up so that n- not everything is too similar, and, yeah. and then that should hopefully lead to quite a harmonious result. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I suddenly got a glimpse of an 80s, a, a friend of mine, I can't say who she is, but she's a well-known TV presenter in her late 70s, early 80s, and he, he in her, sort of moved into the family home, and the rest of it was all different, but her room remained her room. And it was literally everything was in the same chintz fabric. Oh, like yeah. everything, like <laughs> helmets. There was a skirt around the four poster. Yeah. It was like, oh my goodness. I mean, now you could do that and it would be super kitsch, I guess. But this was slightly not quite super kitsch. It was just 80s. I think chintz. that's coming back. I think that's coming back. The power Whole of fast the, look. Yeah, the power of one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, Lisa, do you have rules like that? I mean, do you, um, do you think five or six fabrics is a good kind of thing to aim for layering in a room or do you absolutely think I, think, I think because everyone's touched on that there, there aren't any rules that's the first thing and um i think it's so important to enjoy it and have fun and not take it too seriously that's what we do as a studio anyway so that works for us but um fun is a huge <laughs> part of what we try and, and make the process um and also it's sometimes hard because it makes people feel safer but it's so important not to have everything matching mm-hmm. and to have you know odd numbers of things and not all mm-hmm. even numbers you know I just think three looks so much better than two and, and yeah I think it's trying not to have rules mm-hmm. <laughs> um it's probably the most important thing and to sort of um play around with things and um yeah not not keep everything matching and I would say if you buy what you love um it should always work for you yeah. because you love it yeah and um don't be, don't, yeah, don't, don't be sort of pressured into buying things. I know it's so t- tricky on Instagram, just constantly getting these sponsored posts, you know, serve things all day now, every day, buy this, yeah. buy that, and um, it's kind of overwhelming, isn't it? Sometimes you need to t- take a step yeah. back from it and just remember the things that you've got in your house that you love and why you love them and leave yeah. spaces for collecting things over your travels and over your holidays and over your life and yeah. not sort of do the one-shop stop. 
I think it's interesting you touched on it already, really, in terms of kind of where fashion's gone and things. But I think after sort of two years in lockdown, there does seem to be this um, huge return to sort of maximalism and joy of colour and pattern. And I just wondered whether you're feeling from customers actually and clients where the neutrals are passe now and that people are really wanting to kind of have this joy back in their lives. Have you been noticing, should we start with you, so have, have you been getting a feeling that people are... Want to bring that um, home. I think a lot of people do come to ochre for the colour pops. Doesn't mean that I think neutrals are wrong. There, mm. there are there is a place for them. Again, there's, there's no, no wrong or right about it. And done well, it can be incredibly calming and, mm. and, and wonderful, especially in in hot weather and you know holiday homes and, and, and things like that. To me, if we, it's about it's about the textures, mixing textures. So your wonderful trim, you know, it, it, it's a different texture. And that's what gives it the, the life, it, to my mind. So even if you've done all neutrals, if, if one of them is a velvet, another one is a, you know, embroidered, another one is something else, uh, printed linen, whatever it is, that that's what gives the depth to it. Um, you, you have to be um, quite... Um, much more restrained on, on neutrals. You have to be, you have to be quite strict with yourself, and say no. I'm not. Even though I like that, it's not coming in here, uh, which I'm terrible at, by the way. Um, but I, you know, but I, 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 I do agree with the joy of colour. I think it comes a great relief to, to people in a way that they can, um, they can play around with it and, uh, you know, step it up a bit and, um, you know, all this. Uh, old-fashioned sense of different patterns shouldn't go together. It's rubbish. You know, you can really... I mean, just look at that sofa, for example. They're all <coughs> completely different, but it works. Uh, so I think, I think um, for me, textural is the way of getting a difference. And, and mm. you know, obviously, lucky. luckily for us, we're able to, to, to have a, about 200 different cushions, so we can go which <laughs> way we want to, which is, is, is a fantastic indulgence. I mean, clearly, I think all of your ochre and all of your work works because you um, call it together with a, a, a certain palette. So, you know, um, you've obviously, when you say there's five or six fabrics, there'll be a grounding kind of, um, whether it will be a pastel, blues and greens, or with a bit of a punch. There's obviously, there are ways that you make that cohesive beyond, you know, drawing a pattern. I was going to ask, um, the, the projects we've seen, you've benefited from really lovely light rooms, um, big Georgian windows and things. What happens if you've got a very dark space? How do you deal with that with colour and pattern? And um, should we go left to right again? Sue, so, what do you think? Um, yeah, uh, we're pretty obsessed with light in this country, uh, you know, because of our weather, I suppose. But if you do have a dark room... Um, I don't try and fake it, you know, I, of course I'll put lighting in it and of course I'll try and use some mirrors as well, but I rather love those, what we call a snug, mm. um, and I mean I don't go to nightclubs very much anymore, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that vibe, <laughs> yes they exist, <laughs> uh, especially the nice ones where, where um, you know, the, the, there's masses of colour in there, masses of comfort, and it's, you know, you, you don't see a window at all. Mm. And, and so I, I, I'm, I don't try and change it. I w do want it to be comfortable. I do want jewel colours, I suppose, is, mm. is how I, I, I'd approach it. But I'm not scared of a dark room, um, you know, if, if you adapt it uh, to what you want it to be. Mm. Do, you, do you both agree, kind of going for those dark heritage... Oh yeah, totally. There's that that theory. Well, it's a dark room. We should paint it white. No, I mean, in my eyes, completely the opposite. If it's dark room, embrace it and go for the punchy, dramatic, cocoon-like feel. And um, you're never, as Sue says, you're never going to fake it. That suddenly it's a light-filled room. Um, embrace it and, and ha use it as an opportunity to do something really atmospheric. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, one of the best sorry uh, rooms I ever saw was somebody had got a room with no windows and they tented it inside because yes. uh, it had quite a high ceiling and it just was amazing. Uh, they sometimes turn out to be the best rooms in the house exactly. and they're the room that you would be so worried about. 
funnery. Yeah, the funnery, mm, exactly. Yeah, beautiful. And then I just want to touch a little bit about um, the details because we have we sort of touched upon those a little bit. Um, presumably, that's where you can really, you know, even on a piece of Chesterfield, you could just swap the buttons, right? This is where you can have quite a lot of fun um, doing making those small changes. And and these have come back, I feel as well. I wonder, Jess, are clients coming to you and sort of wanting a bit more of those sorts of um, pelvis and fringes and oh, yeah, yeah, they are, and certainly we're putting it more more of it under their noses. So um, maybe that's a bit difficult, but. Um, um, I think that sort of richness and of uh, a decorative look is going beyond just oh well we're going to have a few more patterns on on our upholstery or cushions or whatever. But it's like it's also further details like the trimmings and mm. and and like you say pelmets and, and 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 so forth. So it's not it it's sort of it's sort of building on on that sort of um, maximum maximalist look that you sort of alluded to earlier and it's just more 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 uh, that doesn't mean that it needs to be overwhelming but I think it's just about just having that richness of de of decoration and really sort of appreciating the, the beauty of these often handmade trims which are really really exquisite pieces of work um just you know these bullions or, or tassels or whatever it is I don't think it means that you have to go whole hog but there can be real joy in these details and um it, it's, I think it's part of that growing taste for more decorative, richly layered look and just sort of these tiny details which which show that it's custom. They show that, yeah. you know, you won't see that on, you know, you go to your friend's house for supper and you won't say, oh, yeah, I got that as well. You know, it's yeah, like, you, it's only detail. you have it. And, it's quite, and, and I think there's something quite nice about that. So I think um, that's what interior designers do all the time because we offer something a little bit different that, than people would necessarily put together themselves, but I think it is perfectly possible for people to put it together themselves if they have the. Uh, I think it just takes a little bit of attention to detail, and you've got to rem think about it. You've got to know about a little bit about it to, to know that you, you to go and look for it. But um, as in, you know, it's not just a cushion. It's like, well, okay, but is it going to have a piping, or is it going to have a frill, or is it going to mm. have this, or is it going to have that? So. Um, and that's just a case of attuning your eye and sort of paying attention to the details when you go into restaurants or, you know, Chelsea Harbour or, you know, a showroom like this. And you think, oh, gosh, actually, yeah, contrast piping might be quite fun yeah. or whatever. And so I think it's just that growing awareness and, and just paying attention to those details rather than thinking, oh, yeah, blue cushion, great, that's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, 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 I'm all for it. I think it's lovely to see these, these details becoming sort of back. Yeah, I think yeah. they're becoming more important and it's all part of that rich layering. Um, and yeah, yeah. Kind of like jewellery for the home. I mean, mm. um, Gavin's uh, <coughs> contrast on his mm. fringe is sort of mm. what makes that um, love seat suddenly modern. Um, mm. Sue, I think that the, there's often places here that you ochre that you like to sort of. Well, I, I adore trimmings and I yeah. agree, I mean, I've always adored them. Um, uh, and if you, if you really start to look at beautiful ones, they're works mm. of art. They actually. are jewels, aren't they? They are mm. absolutely stunning. And you, you can use them to such effect because, you know, you put them on a plain linen, quite modern cushion and suddenly they shout. It, it, it's a wonderful thing to, to, to see and, and the way they make them is absolutely um, exquisite. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I would put trims on everything, and, and I, um, you very wisely said, don't overdo it. I always do. <laughs> and, um, you know, I like tassels, and, uh, you know, I like tassels on a lot of things. And I, we have a sofa called the Tama sofa, which is covered in a striped rug, which is based on an Indian um, wedding rug, they call it, and they come with very bright tassels. It's part of their sort of uniqueness, I suppose. And um, so I decided to put uh, the, the, the tassels on, on, on the sofa and on, on, under the bottom as a sort of a fringe, you know, and a skirt. And then I completely lost my nerve. Um, and so I decided the compromise was to put it on Velcro. 
you could rip it off. Oh, it's <laughs> brilliant. It's like, you didn't want it. But for me, that was the point of it. That gave it its quirk. That gave it its sort of style. But it was the extra bit that I loved. Just thinking how my ten-month-old puppy would be ripping Not the <laughs> Velcro off. <laughs> <laughs> and they love the sound of Velcro. Every time I wear shoes, but anyway. Yeah. Um, that sounds really fun. So um, is that my last question to you all is, is there a faux pas? I know you said there isn't, but I just know there must be one in there that's just... <laughs> There's got to be something where you walk in somewhere and you're just you just oh, think. I've got one. Oh, good, oh, good. I've got one. I can't. I, it's it's personal, of course. It's not it for me be, to yeah. say yeah. like, oh, don't don't do this or do do this. But for me, cannot stand cushions on points like triangle, like oh, diamond yeah. cushions is a big no no <laughs> for me. So sorry, but that is a big no no. So real, that I feel quite strongly yeah, about. Not that. real life, is it? Because I just like, how are you going to keep that up? Oh, what like, is that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's one for me. Okay. <laughs> Lucy, do you have any sort of? Um, I suppose the really obvious one that people always mention when this question is asked is um, future walls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've really gone, haven't they? Yes. Yeah, but they went out with Changing Rooms, but Changing Rooms is back, so maybe they will come back okay. as well. I don't think we feel like we've kind of um, got more sophisticated, haven't we? And people are more likely to want to do something like paint the door frames in a, in a room or do Pick something. out some architectural details, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no feature walls. So yeah, you have to commit. So you, you have to commit. commit. It's yeah. all or nothing. I suppose I, I think know when to spend or what to spend money on. Um, I, I try not to be a terrible snob about stuff. If I, if I found something for 6p uh, in a junk shop... Where's the junk happy shop? Days. Yeah, <laughs> happy days. And I, it's right. Yeah. It's right. So not everything has to be the most expensive yeah. thing. And I, you know, I think some people make a mistake with that. They're, they think because perhaps they've got the money to do it that everything has got to be precious mm. and, and valuable. But something you pick up on the beach mm. can ju be just as important. Well, you've done some good. lovely things with shells and things, so I love all that kind of... Yeah, well, I'm afraid I had to import them in the end. <laughs> <laughs> pick up on a beach and you buy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, some of the... Yeah, a mix of, of also, of course, of natural things and, and yeah. man-made things and all sorts. Um, Right, well, I just want to let you all know that these lovely love seats um, are actually, all the designs are going to be up for auction at Bonhams next month. I don't know the exact date. Do we know the exact date yet? 19th of October. 19th of October, my friend's birthday. Um, <laughs> in aid of the Trussell Trust, which is a charity that works to end poverty. Um, so I think anyone in the Oka team will have more details about that uh, if you want to uh, try and bid for one. Um, and I just want to ask if anyone here has got any questions for anyone on the panel or any, um, I don't know, observations of, I was going to say, has anyone got a favourite, but I don't want to do that because <laughs> <laughs> that's just too mean. Don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> but has, does, does anyone have a, a question? It can be anything. I don't know. What, what's, yes, um, please. Lucy, I was wondering, when you said you're LA client, Oh, yeah, oh. sorry. <laughs> and are you a designer, or a, could you say who you are? Um, yeah, so I'm Hermione from Harm London. I paint landscapes, that's just quick. Um, and, um, <laughs> yeah, so I was wondering, when you had that client from LA who liked all white, um, why, because you're so known for your colour, what drew, drew them to you when they first of all wanted all white? Like, did they have the inkling they might want a bit of colour, or was it sort of... That's the a very a good question, because I often ask that myself sometimes with clients when we, we disagree on something. But um, they, I think, knew the, that they were setting up a life in London, and so they wanted to embrace the English look. Mm -hmm. So they wanted some hand-holding to, to, to make it English, to make it new, mm -hmm. um, and not to make it too American. Unfortunately, due to their work commitments, they had to sell the house very quickly and move back to LA. But the good news is we're doing the house in LA, so we can now go all white. <laughs> well, that would be quite, that would be a good, nice challenge for you. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. But it would be a totally converted new... them now, and they'll go for <laughs> full on. Exactly. Full on. exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're thinking, let's have white. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that will be interesting to see how it plays out. Oh, that would be great with all that wonderful light and sunshine. Um, anyone else got a question? Yeah. 
Oh, we have the mic in the front row, please. <laughs> um, have either of you, or all three of you, ever had customers that have come back and said, actually, we really, we've tried to live with this piece, but we can't. We, we want to change it for a natural linen. I actually have had that. What happened? Um, and what was the piece? We, do you know what it was? Uh, I shouldn't probably be saying this, but it was, um, we did, it was a huge open pan kitchen in a sitting room and a, you know, all encompassing room. And um, we'd done a lot of green and the husband, interestingly, just called up and said, this is not your fault. We signed off on this, but I've decided I hate green. Oh. And can we redo <laughs> basically everything? The curtains, the everything. Yeah, so we, we did the still whole thing again. Married? <laughs> yes, I know. I was, was going to ask that. What colour did you go for instead? Um, so we did. Weirdly, it's, it's, I would love to. It's such an interesting story because um, he. We, just, we. It was all stripy and lovely, and the curtains were striped. Sorry, and I thought it was quite masculine. Anyway, it turned out what he wanted was more florals and more sort oh. of orangey, corally, oh. pinky colours. I would love to go into more detail, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we did have one. Yeah. We did have when I worked at um, Living Etc. We did end up with this kind of talking of kind of husband and wife relationship. We did end up every cover story. They ended up splitting up. Like magazine, and it became like the, in in our in house it's like it's the curse um, I think one was Guy Berryman and his because he they'd done a lovely house but yeah it's um you must find an awful lot out about your clients when you're oh in their gosh, homes you, do. you wow. have to be a sort of psychiatrist <laughs> yes yeah it's I mean I'm not crazy a, uh, I'm not so customer facing and client facing as 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 you are but I, you know, you've got to juggle this. You know, mm. one of them's probably in charge of the budget, mm. and one is in charge of the taste. Yeah. Um, and they don't often meet in the middle, Absolutely. actually. Uh, and you have so you have to, you know, you have to. I, I know, I know people who've who've rung up their decorator and said, whatever she chooses now, she's not having it. <laughs> 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 so you have to be, I mean, I think you, what you do is so commendable. I, I, I'm not sure I have the patience for it. Yeah, you do have to have an awful lot of patience. Yeah. I remember talking to um, the late David Collins, who used to do some residential, but he said he could only do maybe one a year because compared to hotels or restaurants, um, it, you know, especially when you're looking at that top 1% of, I mean, did Madonna's house, can you imagine? I mean, <laughs> how demanding. Well, that um, didn't work, did it? <laughs> they the cover of living <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you know, I, I can't imagine being, like, people, yeah, how uh, tough it could possibly get with someone's home. But you're obviously you all charming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's people's houses. That's their yeah. most expensive yeah. investment. It's the thing that's the most important to them. So emotions run high. So mm. you learn, you learn quite a lot about psychology, don't you? Mm. We try to be gently encouraging. So you know, it's not for me to sort of strong arm a client and say, "Look, you've got to have this because otherwise you've no. ruined the whole scheme." And we're not divas about it. It's their home and it's their investment, and they've got to love it. Um, but I do see it as my professional responsibility to make sure that, you know, it, we have confidence yeah, in it. Yeah, you want it to sign it off. And that we're going to love it. And, you, you, you know, you just sort of have to gently encourage them to, to trust you. And, and, and hopefully they do. And if they're not sure and they still go ahead with it, then you keep everything crossed that they're going to love it. And more often than not, they do. Um, so we have never had the, the, the situation that, that you've said, or certainly they didn't come back to us to tell us that they, you know, they hated what we did. But, um, you know, we, it, it, it's always, to, to, to a certain degree, it's always um, collaborative with the client. The, cl the client always has an input. And even when you do the whole scheme and you present everything and everything's from scratch and everything's been chosen by us, the client almost always, very rarely, do we have a client say, "Yep, great, let's get on with it." They'll say, mm, "Not sure about that." Mm. So there's always these sort of revisions and an input from the client, which then sort of shapes it away from what we would do for ourselves or what I would do for myself, um, and and becomes something that 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 is more collaborative. And I hope that that means that we avoid the the situation where they're like, "What is mm. this?" and they're dissatisfied mm. it. 
And if, if that has happened, they have, certainly haven't been brave enough to come back to me and tell me about it. But so <laughs> maybe, maybe, else, it, no. maybe it's happened. Maybe it's happened. Is there any more questions from anyone? Oh, great. Well, thank you all for coming. I just um, wanted to mention, I know you've got quite an exciting event coming up, Oka, at this very groovy place. I don't know if you've all read about Old Sessions House yet in Clerkenwell, but um, I had a little look around it a couple of years ago and then lockdown happened and it didn't open. So, But it has finally opened and you're doing something there. Do you want to tell everyone about that? Well, yes, we've, we've taken it over as a sort of townhouse in a way with workshops um, and uh, you know, uh, displays and room sets, etc., um, for three days. Is that right, Eliza? Three days uh, towards the end of or middle of, of October. Eighth and ninth. Of beginning yeah. of October, um, um, but it, it it it's going to be a, a, you know a really fun three days with a, with a, a lot of interaction. Um, and it's it, it, it's a brilliant sight. Apparently, Burberry had it once for a, a oh, show yeah. so, uh, it is a years great. ago. And mm -hmm. so for us, it's very, it's it's a sort of showcasing. It's kind of a, a road trip, uh, which um, you know it's like like getting out. And a lot of the teams in there will be people who are not normally customer facing. Uh, you know, mm. it's all very well for for Sebnam and, and the people who work here. But a lot of people who work at Oka don't get to see the customers as well. So That's I think brilliant. it's a really, really exciting thing to do. So we're very, very excited about it. And anyone's welcome. And I think you can find the details on Instagram. And also um, you can book on Eventbrite to go and check that out. So that sounds great and, and immersive. Love the sound yeah. of that. Um, and anything, just quickly, anything you've both got? You've got the hotel coming up. Are you still very much residential? Is there anything... We are, oh, if anyone's got any hotels they want to buy, <laughs> please, please call me. Right I'd be delighted. Or, or in LA, that also sounds excellent. <laughs> yeah, I'd be delighted. Well, yeah, I mean, keep us posted on the... Is there a name for the hotel? Is it too soon to say all of that yet? Um, it is too soon to say. OK, all right. Cotswolds there. Right? <laughs> okay. Good I'm drive around the Cotswolds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> looking for builder signs. <laughs> thank you, Jess, thank Lucy, you and so Sue. Much. Thank you. Today. And thank you all of you for your questions and for coming along. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I realised I didn't say who I was. I'm so rubbish at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bethan, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm a design journalist and uh, from WGSN. So I'll just say that at the end. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.